Yeah. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, welcome. We are very excited. Um, welcome to our talk, Testing OSGI, The Groovy Way. Um, as you have already figured out, this is a talk about um, uh, writing tests while you're listening to groovy music. <laughs> um, no, it's not. Of course not. Um, it's writing OSGI component tests with a programming language Groovy, right? So a little different approach. My name is Lars Pfannenschmidt. I'm an engineer at, uh, or I recently joined Level Up Analytics, but uh, since last Wednesday we got acquired, so it's now into it. And yeah, very exciting. I had a very exciting week last week. Um, so another thing I do is uh, mobile development. So whenever you have the chance and you are in Cologne, for example, uh, there's a mobile Cologne user group, so when you uh, are thirsty and want to have a beer, uh, feel free to join. There are mobile topics, mobile talks, and so on. Um, I'm not here alone. Yes, hi, my name is Dennis Nobel. I'm uh, working as an IT consultant uh, at Itemis, mainly in the field of uh, Java, uh, web, and OSGI development. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay, so we'd like to begin with a vision. So imagine writing tests would make fun. I don't know how you feel, but at least for us, uh, writing tests is at least not uh, the most funny thing of uh, software development. So in this talk, uh, we want to show you a slightly different approach how you could write your tests. It's not only about using Groovy, it's uh, about how we use Groovy to write OSGI tests. So you will see uh, how we implement our tests and how we execute them and uh, also automate all these things with um, Maven and Tyco. To get to know you a little bit better, we want to ask some questions. So who of you tests his OSGI components? So hands up. Okay. I think almost uh, all people are testing. It's quite good. Testing is good. Uh, we have another question. Um, yeah, uh, who of you is already using Groovy? I mean, for some sort of Groovy script, Groovy Mojo, some whatever handy, some maybe. Yeah. Okay, some nice. Um, since we know we knew, um, we know uh, you now, um, we want to tell you a little bit of our story. So we both work together. Um, at, a, at, a, at a project, and um, since we are not working at the same company right now, this not, does not mean that we haven't worked in the past. Um, so we, we did work on a very interesting project. We had an embedded device, um, some ARM Cortex-11, so it was some sort of home router or um, Raspberry Pi-ish hardware. We had the CVM in place, and which means that it's uh, a subset of the uh, Java 1.4.2 API, so, so the CDC Compliance Foundation 1.1. <coughs> um, on this CVM or Java Virtual Machine, we had the Prozis MBS OSGI stack running. So um, some of you might know that um, framework. We did most of our development with the Eclipse IDE. So, uh, um, and we had, of course, some uh, continuous integration built infrastructure in place. So we were already building with uh, Maven, Tyco, we had a Nexus in place, we had a Jenkins in place. So these were the tools um, and the, the, the products we were using up in, at this stage. So, naively, naively speaking, um, you could just go ahead, use the um, the framework which is there, something like the um, test execution environment from Prozist. Um, but we thought a little about it and we came up with a list of requirements we want to meet. Um, first of all, we wanted to have easy to write tests, right? So we want to have something like TestNG, JUnit um, framework to actually execute our tests. We wanted to use a model language. Since we were stuck with the CVM, um, we did not want to write our tests in Java 1.4 something ish style. Um, we wanted to have type safe access to our Java code. Um, easy mocking was very important for us, um, so no fancy mocking. 
Um, we wanted to have it be uh, to have it executable in the Eclipse IDE while you were developing on your machine as a programmer, as a developer, and of course the Jenkins has to build it as well. So you have to have to have some sort of uh, Maven integration. At least what we had was Maven integration. Um, we wanted to have good IDE support. So I want to do refactorings and all that stuff, and don't want to change the test um, manually. And of course, since we had production code which was written CDC compliant, we did not want to have any, um, any side effects on our production code, so which was very, very important for us, right? Um, okay, I said modern language. Um, hopefully the guy from the Oracle booth um, are not listening right now, but is Java really a modern language? Depends, I mean, all, we are all waiting for um, Java 8 since a while, it's not out there. Um, you can use early, early versions, but um, yeah, this is why we came up with uh, writing tests with Groovy, right? Um, you might ask yourself, but why Groovy? Um, it's very, very simple um, because we can, um, which means we have used it in the past, so we kind of knew in what we are getting into. So we use it for code generation things, uh, for, uh, for mojos, Groovy scripts, and we, we use it whenever it was handy and the right tool for the right job. So we decided why not try Groovy as a language um, to actually write our tests. Okay, um, back to the points of our requirements. Um, Groovy is a JVM language, so Java might not be the modern language, but the JVM is very, very good um, in terms of you have um, in, in terms of uh, stuff you can do with it. So Groovy is a nice thing. There are different languages you could use in the JVM. Um, you have syntax sugar, things like uh, native maps, native lists, native regular expressions. So you could write uh, anything directly in there. You don't have to assign new variables, things like that. Um, you have closures. Hey, closures are already there. So those of you who are waiting for Java 8, um, try Groovy so you get the experience what a closure could look like. Um, and it's less chatty. So you don't, uh, so you write less and get more, right? So you don't have to, especially in tests, you don't want to have huge test cases where everything is confusing and uh, you don't want to read the Java doc, which is not, uh, not uh, in, the, in the proper state anyway. So you want to read the code and must be, it must be understandable. Right. So, can you read this, hopefully? So, the at test annotation indicates that this is a Java uh, JUnit 4 test. Uh, in the uh, method name, you can see that we can use a simple, a simple string for, um, for the method name. So, no camel case, no nothing. You just write your, uh, your, um, your, your uh, text there, what the text is actually doing. So build pizza with barbecue sauce only. Um, we have some uh, things like type inference. So the dev pizza means, uh, in this case, the pizza bowler creates a new pizza object, but we don't have to do something like pizza, pizza equals la la. Um, dev would be sufficient because it's using the type inference to actually figuring out what type it is. Um, you also see that the reset that uh, it's kind of readable, right? So you get all uh, rid of, of the brackets and the, uh, and the column at the end, and you can read it mostly uh, as, a, as a sentence. Assert that pizza sauce is barbecue. So from my understanding, this is very, very readable. Um, so this was more or less the groovy part, and yeah, my colleague Dennis. Yes, right. At this point, uh, you saw how easy it is to write uh, a JUnit test with Groovy. But we are in the world of OSGI, right? So we need to write tests for OSGI components. And then the question is, how could we do that? So I want to give a short example. Um, given we have pizza service, so the pizza service might need a payment service. These are OSGI services. Um, you can have a method like you see in the code here, a method named place order, where you can uh, give in an order object, and then um, the pizza service needs the payment service, which here is um, a variable named credit card payment service, to somehow handle the transaction and has to call the method handle transaction. 
Later on, we want to uh, develop an uh, OSGI test, which tests if this method is being called. So now we have to think about how can we do this. Of course, we can write a simple unit test as we showed before. Unit tests are executed very fast. They are focused on the component, but they have some disadvantages. So on the one hand, um, you don't have OSGI runtime features. Um, maybe you need a bundle context, a service tracker, and other things. You could mock all those things, of course, but uh, you don't want it to. So must, if you want to do a JUnit test, you must mock all those things. And another thing is, uh, if you're writing OSGI products, you have uh, declarative parts. So the manifest MF, maybe you use uh, declarative services, and to test all these things, um, yeah, it is not possible to do that with unit tests. There are other kinds of tests. There are, there are system tests. System tests are also known as end-to-end uh, -end tests, uh, typically cover the complete system. They are execute, executed against the real target environment, so in our case, uh, this somehow was this uh, comparable router device, and um, yeah, of course, there is uh, no need for a mocking or any special configuration because you have the real hardware. But system tests, <coughs> yeah, as I said before, uh, you need uh, the real target environment. So the, this means a high execution effort because uh, if you want to execute it uh, on your machine, you must be connected to the hardware and um, this also typically uh, implies uh, slow execution. And uh, for us, the most important uh, disadvantage more is that system tests are typically not focused. So you somehow test the outer interface, but if you want to really test one single OSGI component, you cannot do that uh, with system tests, because uh, if the test fails, you may not know which component really uh, was defect. But what you could do is some kind of in-container testing. So in-container testing um, means that the tests are executed within the OSGI environment, so and that somehow combines the advantages from unit tests and system tests. So, uh, in-container testing is focused on the component. Uh, it also um, tests the declarative parts of your OSGI, and you need only to mock those things you wanted to. But we have a problem, of course, we could not run uh, Groovy, our C uh, CVM environment, so in this um, OSGI framework, uh, which we use the process MBS framework, because uh, we had Java 1.4 there, and uh, it's not possible to run Groovy. And we came up with the idea to execute the tests within a different OSGI environment, Equinox, and also to use a modern JVM. Of course, of course uh, OSGI is a standard, and uh, we found out that uh, most part of our production code also runs inside the Equinox environment. And then we decided, okay, let's uh, use Equinox, because Equinox uh, has a good tooling in Eclipse, so it can easily execute um, JUnit tests uh, that start somehow in Equinox container and execute it there. And uh, yeah, there's also a good tooling for automated bits. But now we want to do um, a test, as I said before, for the sample. So we're trying to assert that um, the pizza service calls um, the method handle transaction at the payment service. And therefore, we need a mock of the payment service. And um, yeah, mocking is uh, really, really easy in Groovy because there is uh, the so called S type operator. And with the S type operator, you can simply transform a map into a proxy object. So you can see the code which belongs to it. Uh, we define uh, a variable payment service, or at least uh, we assign it to a variable. Uh, we define a map, um, you see brackets, uh, define a method or a closure inside this map, which is called handle transaction. It uh, takes uh, some arguments, and within the method, the assertion is done. So assert that company ID is equal to Luigi's pizza service. And at the end, you can see that with the S type operator, this somehow is transformed into a proxy object. And yeah, this is all we need to do to mock an object with Groovy. Really simple, isn't it? So now we need to write our test by using the mock. Uh, we wrote a simple and uh, 
a testing framework where we have a base class, so called OSGI test, and um, you see the concrete test class, which is called pizza service test, and um, you need to um, return the bundle context. Because uh, this is uh, executed within the OSGI environment, um, you need the bundle context for the OSGI services and so on. So you must implement a method, uh, as indicated by the add override annotation, um, that uses from our activator of the production code the bundle context and returns it. And here you see the real test, which is a JUnit uh, test also. There is uh, the name, the string, assert that the handle transaction method is called, it's the name of the test. And the test really is very short, uh, where the dots are, there's uh, the definition of the mock I showed you before. And there is a register mock, you will see the implementation on the next slide. Then we get our service, the pizza service. At this point the service is there because uh, it needed um, the payment service. We get our pizza service, which is then our real production code. Uh, we build a pizza, a customer info, uh, and uh, create a new order object, and then we call the method place order at the pizza service, and um, at the end we do an assertion that transaction called is true, and the other assertion uh, was made inside the mock. As here you see the base class, or at least some parts of the base class, uh, was GI test dot groovy. You can see that there is the method get service uh, we called before to get our service. You hand in a class object there, and um, yeah, from um, the bundle context, we are trying to find a service reference um, with the class name. And we do an assertion that it is not null, and um, we return it there. So in Groovy, you don't have to write return. It's um, automatically um, generated by the compiler and returns a service object. It's a register <coughs> mock method. You see we hand in a mock object. Um, you can give in uh, a map of properties. There's also another good point of Groovy. You can define uh, default values. So you can leave out the parameter while calling the method uh, as seen on the slide before. And uh, then the map is uh, simply empty. Um, there we use another operator. Uh, as, uh, how was this operator called? Uh, um, yeah, the question. So in the interface, it's mock, mock class interface question mark dot. The question mark is the uh, safe navigation um, operator. Right, that was the name. So yeah. at this point, yeah, it, um, you don't have to do null checks. So in Java, you have to write if uh, mock is unequal to null and interface is unequal to null. And at this point, if some of this variable um, is null, at the end, null is returned. And we can do um, another assertion. That it, it's not null and uh, register a service. We also have a registered service uh, variable where we somehow save all our registered services, and at the end of the test execution, all services automatically will be de registered. And then we can register it, it's a bundle context, and it's, um, yeah, it's present in the OSGI environment. So it's part of the test framework, so you don't have to write that. Uh, all you have to write to implement the test was on the slide before, just uh, to get you know how it works. Yeah, um, so now we've seen how you could actually write such, uh, such tests. Um, the different story is um, how to actually get this uh, working with Tyco and, and, and CI. Um, so uh, if you go to the Groovy website, you will find a very, very nice um, um, explanation how you get actually the Groovy compiler um, working within your Maven environment. I mean, keep in mind we have to do three things in order to execute such tests um, uh, automatically. So we have a, our .groovy files, so they are somewhere there. Um, so someone has to compile them and make actually bytecode out of it. Um, at runtime, you have runtime dependencies you have to uh, resolve. And the third thing is that you have to tell um, Maven that um, that these tests or this bytecode is actually executed as um, as tests. So this is uh, one of the first steps: is just set up the Groovy compiler as it is described on the on the Groovy website. That's all. Um, they can describe it much better than I can. So if you go to the Groovy website, it's very well explained how you um, um, uh, set up your POM. Um, if you have the parent POM, that you had have. Um, 
everything in place from the compiler and you actually can see in your target folder that you get some class file, file um, folders out of it. Uh, one thing you don't have to, um, you, don't, you, you have is um, when you have groovy dependencies within your, in your tests, you have runtime dependencies which you have to resolve. This is why you have to add a repository um, to, your, to your Tyco setup where the actually um, groovy dependencies um, are. So this is just an entry um, uh, referencing the Spring Source Groovy Eclipse project and there are all the jars and um, it's a P2 repository. There's all the stuff you need to actually um, write your OCI stuff in the manifest. Um, another thing you have to make sure is, um, which is not working out of the box, um, you have to tell Taiko Surefire that it please executes all the files. Um, you can see this indicated by the include here. Um, with this wildcard, you could uh, do whatever uh, wildcard test or something, but we take all, all the classes which are there, and this is the only thing you have to do um, to really execute this test then. So, this, uh, so it's compiling, you have your dependencies, and now it's executing. So that's it. Nothing more to worry about, actually. Um, okay, we are already at the conclusions. Um, please uh, use um, integrative tests or do in-container tests for your OSGI components. I'm not saying that you only please write uh, container tests. Please write unit tests and black box tests. As long as you're writing tests, um, that's fine. Um, I mean, it's not fine, but you have to think, using the right tool for the right job, so if you have the need of an in-container test, don't think that it's not possible, it's very easy, and it's very handy. Um, we have seen that um, adding Groovy support to your project is very, very easy. Um, you can easily add it to Equinox and Tyco, and installing a Groovy Eclipse um, plug into Eclipse is as easy, right? So just go to groovy. what is it, codehouse.org, and install the IDE Groovy stuff. Um, Groovy really makes testing a lot of, so it really takes pain away, right? So um, it's, of course, a little, a little different in the beginning, but the nice thing is um, you don't have to know everything of the Groovy syntax by heart. You can just type in Java at the beginning, right? So when you type in Java, and you think, ah, there, someone maybe gives you a hint that it could be written in a more groovyish way, <coughs> then you adapt slowly to it, and at the end your test will get more and more in the groovy, groovy programming language than um, in, the, the Java, in the Java programming language. But in the beginning, you could start just writing Java in your Groovy code. Um, uh, another very important thing for us was um, it's not slow. The in-container tests are pretty, pretty fast, at least what I think and what you get from it. So it's really executed in the container. <coughs> Don't forget it. There's an Equinox starting. <coughs> your dependence from if you have declarative services, the um, declarative services components will, will be started, things like that. So there's really a lot of stuff ha happening in the background, um, but it's very fast. So we had um, over 300 tests and it took about, at least on my machine, three minutes. On the machine of Dennis, <laughs> 10 minutes. Um, it's Windows, so. So, yeah, his, uh, so every job was checked by his uh, antivirus stuff. And, uh, <laughs> horrible. Um, so, yeah, it's really, really fast. So, um, if you leverage it, please add unit test and at, um, at container tests, they're very fast executed, and you have very fast, um, very fast um, feedback intervals. Um, and writing Groovy tests is really fun. It really makes, uh, it takes a pain away. I mean, we don't want to write tests all day, right? So this is what the people uh, say you have to do right now. It, so, but you still want to write your product, production code. So you get not paid for actually um, how much uh, tests you write, you will get paid, or you are getting paid for the productive code you write. So um, it takes the pain away and it's really fun. Yeah, um, thank you uh, for listening. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, all the code was very compressed, so go to GitHub, search for Groovy OSGI. Um, you will find a testing project there uh, and some, sort, uh, uh, some short um, readme just do uh, testing and maybe clean install and everything um, will be 
running then, I assume. Um, yeah, we're not at blame it on Tycho. Um, um, yeah, thank you. And thank you also for my side. So yeah, we will, uh, questions? We have enough time. <laughs> Sure. So, have you tried this approach to it because of the party services? Yes. And I guess it works out of the box. Sorry? And does it work out of the box? Uh, yeah, it does. It worked out of the box. So, so we were doing it with uh, the event admin, uh, declarative services, I don't know what else, uh, user admin. Um, uh, the, only, the only tricky part which we did not get up and running in Equinox was the uh, conditional permission admin because it's so glued into the framework, you, yeah, it's, there's no way to actually try to get the condition, from, uh, conditional permission admin. I think it may so depend on your OSGI framework. So in this case, so our production OSGI framework was process and yeah, we tried it with Equinox and at least all things really worked quite well. So our production code. Mm -hmm worked with um, the creative services, all things are working in uh, Equinox 2 with our packs. Yeah. So basically you can use the Groovy test as unit test and this system test and it will be the same code basically. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually what we did. So we had uh, an in-container test where we used event admin and declarative service and things like that. So this is the nice thing, right? So who is who's testing your XML file? So, or who is testing that the, uh, that the, uh, uh, that the uh, declarative service XML is really, uh, really declared properly in the manifest? Nobody. So your unit test will tell you, fine, awesome, your code looks pretty, but uh, it, will, it will not be called anyway. So, so this makes it kind of handy. Sure. Uh, so you're using Tyco, and that's great. I'm wondering, have you also tried to use it with like BB tools, for example, or the Maven Bundle plugin, which is also um, <laughs> Honestly speaking, I think there should not be a problem to actually get it up and running. Um, I, I've seen Groovy, um, Groovy Gradle projects out there, so where people uh, use Groovy OSGI uh, with Gradle. And I don't see a reason why it should not why it's not should not work. Right. But so it hasn't been tried yet. Right? It hasn't been tried yet. So it's uh, in our build, we already had uh, Maven and Tyco set up for right. compiling, and so we did it with uh, Maven and Tyco. Yeah. So I mean, if you use it in a Felix environment, the only thing have to, you have to make sure that uh, at runtime or whatever, if what you have packs or whatever is starting up, that you have the only thing you have to make sure that um, the bytecode is actually really executed within it. So you might have to um, ch make changes at the JUnit runner. I don't know where you have to uh, really plug it in, or um, and you have to make sure that all the runtime dependencies which Groovy needs are there. So at runtime, it does a lot of reflection magic. Um, so you have to make sure that uh, everything uh, is in place. But it should be fine. It should run. Cool. Yeah. Well, but let us know when you when you when you uh, have it up and running with PND. I'll talk to you afterwards because one of the things that I'm kind of doing in OCI is I'm I'm kind of running a wiki page where um, a lot of people are describing various ways to build and test OCI. Okay. And I think this would be a great addition to that page. Thank you. Uh, you know how to do this with Ruby, but I would. You know, personally, be more interested in using BB. Okay, as sure. A background. So, you know, that might be a fun product yeah. on the side. <laughs> yeah. uh, not relevant to your message exactly, but uh, what kind of testing did you do on the processed um, framework afterwards? Because you said this all. Uh, we had yeah, the, the so called system test or black box test. Black, black. So, on the most of the code, um, so wherever there was a need. So, whenever, so when you use a process specific service, um, you will, won't get it up and running, and the service uh, needs some uh, process framework dependencies, right? So um, you have to sure uh, write some tests on the uh, for the process side as well. But usually, this was done with a T execution as a test execution environment by process, or with a black box or system tests. So where you deploy everything on your rooterish hardware, and then take a look if, if it's working or not. But most code we did was um, OSGI compliant and not process specific. Yeah. Uh, how, do, how, how much we measure um, improving of, <coughs> of uh, productivity uh, due to the fact you have chosen a movie compared to having just using bare bone Java with some mock stuff like Mockito? 
Um, so I think, of course, you could use uh, Java um, with Mojito. It, it also works. You could uh, use some other JVM languages like um, Extend. So for us, Groovy was the best choice because uh, it uh, met all other requirements. So the tooling for Groovy, at least we think, is quite good in Eclipse and also for automated builds. I don't know if all those points fit for other languages. We uh, somehow looked at other languages, uh, for example, also Extend, but at some points, um, the best uh, language for us then was Groovy, but you could also do it with um, the approach uh, f by using um, the Equinox framework. It's somehow um, different, so you could also use Equinox to execute your tests uh, with Java. But we have no idea how much uh, time we, we've saved, honestly speaking. Um, it was just a painkiller, so it was fine. Yeah. How did you control your dependency management? So the jars that really aren't using declarative services, they're not using Blueprint. How did you control your ordering, your start ordering, and, and whatnot for running your test? Um, interesting. We haven't had any issues with it, actually. Maybe we did it wrong, but, or to... Sounds like you did it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, actually, um, what is... I'm not sure if I uh, got the question. Um, I'm not sure if... So you have simple bundles that aren't really a service. Right, but yeah. then you have, yeah. you have your services that depend on your just your simple bundles. Oh. How do you how do you ensure that those simple bundles are available uh, when you bring the okay. service? Yeah. Yeah, when you, okay, I, I, I got you. So at, uh, in Eclipse, you have to add them to your launcher <coughs> thingy. And in Taiku, you have to declare in the, uh, in the, in the Taiku dependencies um, your bundles you need. So at, at, that, at that moment when you're figuring out, okay, there's a service missing, for example, declarative services, yeah. which you apparently need, um, at that time, um, you have to add it to Taiku manually. Yeah, or to, to your OSGI launching configuration. Yeah, this is something you have to um, keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So a shared launching file for the team would be nice. I think it's uh, in the example um, that we added declarative services as an additional bundle because it's not loaded automatically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much.